Okay, so this is my third attempt to upload a vlog post for my final post, and I'm really, really hoping that this one goes through. I've been having some technical difficulties, so here's to hoping. But anyway, this is my last vlog post of this entire year, uh, believe that or not. It's pretty crazy. Um, can't believe that the year has flown by. I feel like um, I'm like it's time just flew by. I um, had my last student teaching week this past week. Last day was on Friday. Um, it was a very fun but sad, emotional day. Um, my students and my CT um, ended up planning uh, surprise parties for me in each one of the classes. Um, everybody volunteered to bring in some things for me like food, breakfast food, and baked goods and all that stuff. And they kept it a secret all week because um, uh, they were told about this um, at the beginning of the week when I was out of the room observing other teachers. And I'm really surprised that um, the about 100 kids that I teach um, didn't say a word to me. I was, I was surprised. I was shocked. But they did. They kept it a secret. So apparently they were very, very serious about surprising me, and they did. Um, so not only did they have these parties, but they also – bought me a lot of goodbye gifts uh, with new teacher, like supplies, markers, pencils, all that good stuff. Um, there were a lot of kids who pitched in with my CT to get me this really nice, awesome bag of teaching supplies, um, as well as some kids who bought me individual gifts that they did on their own. And I was just completely taken aback. I mean, I didn't, I did not see that coming. I was completely shocked. I um, like left the building with um, several bags of this like, of pencils and markers and like clips and all this stuff and I it was something that I really did not expect. Um, it was a really really nice gesture and kind of um, was something that I didn't even realize how much of an impact I had on these kids, but throughout that day, and it, like with all the nice things they did for me, not only that, just the nice things that they said, they wrote me really nice cards um, the whole day. So many kids were just like saying how they didn't want me to leave, um, that they were going to miss me next week, and they kept asking if I was going to come back and um, teach next year, if I was going to go with them to eighth grade. Um, there were a few kids who were crying by the time I had to leave at the end of the day, I mean, it was it was really emotional, and so I I was happy to say that I finished my student teaching experience, but it was also it was really sad because I felt bad that I was leaving these kids because they were so sad and they were so sweet to me, and I was just um, I was so conflicted because I felt bad about leaving, but you know it was time to go. There was an expiration date on this experience, but um, it was it was really tough to say goodbye because that school, um, those kids, my CT, that became a part of my daily routine. That was a big, big part of my life, honestly. Um, and just knowing that I made such an important impact on them based on how my last day went, how they reacted, um, to me that is the payoff of this entire experience, not just student teaching, but of getting my master's in education. Like, I know that doing the work, getting the grades, um, getting the diploma and license, that's all part of it. But to me, the big payoff was, you know, getting that feedback from students, feeling like they really appreciated me. That was, that was what told me that I did something right, that I was I was doing good by then, that I was, you know, taking everything I learned in my classes and applying it in the right ways um, because I really did feel appreciated and, like, I was genuinely going to be missed. And so I was just very, very happy to know that um, they felt like I was a good teacher to them. So, um, like I said, it was an emotional day, but um, overall good feelings all around. Um, in terms of just this being a reflection on the entire year. Um, it, it It's so funny because I remember hearing the phrase, like the journey from the other side to the, um, to the other side of the desk. And I remember hearing that at first and thinking it was kind of cheesy. 
kind of lame at first, I'm not going to lie. But um, it's so funny because that ends up being exactly what it's like. It really is a journey. You slowly just one day you're like switching and all of a sudden you're thinking like a teacher. And it's really not all of a sudden because you do have your methodology and the philosophy along with using that in your in the student teaching experience. But um, at some point during my student teaching, I made that transition. I, I did have that journey from one side of the desk to the other. And at the beginning, I certainly did not feel like a teacher. I certainly felt like I was faking it till I made it kind of thing, um, that I smiled politely, but inside was freaking out. And then by the end, it was second nature. I just came in. I knew what to do. Um, interacting with the kids was something that I didn't to think about, that I wasn't worried about, that I just, I just inherently knew how to do. Um, and same thing with teaching. I just, I wasn't worried about what I was saying or how I was saying it because it just, be, it became second nature. Um, and so I thought that was really funny that at first I kind of knocked that idea, um, but it ends up that I was wrong. Um, that it really is a journey and that you do transition from thinking like a student to thinking like a teacher. Um, so now I definitely think that I do uh, think like a teacher. Uh, just I, instead of just saying the buzzwords like student growth and student learning, I actually understand what it means to see that and to implement that in my classroom. Um, so those are just some of the ways that I feel like um, I've developed into this brand new teacher instead of a student who's taking classes on how to be a teacher. Like I, tr I truly feel like a teacher instead of a student who's studying to be a teacher. So that's one thing that I do truly feel I've grown a lot in is just feeling like a teacher. Um, in terms of what I think I'm going to bring um, from this experience to my future job, particularly with my student teaching, um, I definitely think one thing that I undervalued was the importance of organization for your students. So not just as a teacher, like I know as a teacher you need to know um, where your stuff is, how you're going to or organize yourself, but also helping students be organized themselves with classroom materials, having a notebook, having specific rules to keep a notebook or a binder, or keeping it in the classroom, having a specific place where students can turn in work, where students can pick up missed work. Um, Especially uh, as I got to go around to the other classes uh, in the school, not just my CT's class, but other teachers, seeing that it was pretty consistent across all the classrooms showed me that it's very important to have an organizational system, not just for you, but for your students as well. So I definitely think that's one thing I'm going to take with me, um, specifically for the younger kids, like the 6th through 8th graders. I think they, they do need that support in helping them succeed, so not just, you know, giving them homework and helping them learn, but just helping them learn life skills in general, I think it's really important. Um, and then lastly, just uh, the one thing that um, I thought was funny in this prompt for the blog, it talks about how we can revisit our metaphor, our teaching metaphor, or the this I believe, and my teaching metaphor, ironically, I feel, hasn't changed a bit. Um, I wrote about how I felt like the classroom was like a team, teacher was like the coach and the students were the players and we have to work together um, because we are trying to just be this team, this one unit. And um, uh, in my actual student teaching, I truly would take on that persona of being a coach and, and very encouraging and I would make sure that my students knew that I believed in them and I would try to um, coach them to the answers. I wouldn't give them the answers. I would help them ask the questions, the right questions, tell them that I believed in them. And it ended up being a really, really helpful tool for me, uh, not just with building relationships, but also um, establishing behavior management, um, which is one thing that I feel like we all struggled in our cohort. Um, but for me, instead of being strict, instead of being angry, I took the I'm the cool one type of attitude um, so when I would have to give out punishments, I wouldn't be angry, I wouldn't be strict, I would just say, here's the rule and you broke it, so here's your consequence, but I still believe that you can change your actions in the future. So I would never feel like I needed to condemn a student for breaking the rules. Instead, I would just say, here's what the rule is, you broke it, you knew that you broke it, so I have to give you consequence, 
but that doesn't condemn you forever. That just means that you have to change how you're acting in my classroom so you don't get in trouble again. So that was one thing that I actually think um, I inherently knew about myself was that I am encouraging, I am like a coach, because I have had um, experience in the past with being a leader of um, those who are a little bit younger than me and that I know that just yelling isn't going to work, that they really need to feel supported and like you care. And so to me, in my classroom, I know that I want that positive environment and that, well, behavior management does have to be part of your classroom. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. It can be uh, just, it is what it is. But don't worry, because everybody can change, and you can change too. So that's kind of my attitude. That's how I uh, ran my class this year. Um, and I always made sure that I was, you know, smiling when everybody left, even if there was behavior management issues. So I think that is one thing that um, hasn't changed. I still believe that um, I am still like a coach to those um, students. Uh, and if anything, I almost feel like I understand my metaphor more because I think it is important to develop uh, a team atmosphere in the classroom. Uh, and almost, uh, I think I would like to develop that a little bit more because I do think I have the coaching part down that I am encouraging, but I almost want to help students be encouraging of one another like teammates because that was one thing that I didn't see across the board. Some students were like that and some were not. So I think in the future I would like to um, develop a classroom that has a team-like atmosphere that has everybody working with one another. Because um, I have seen it done. I saw some students actually on my last day helping out other students um, to finish their work, um, which I thought was phenomenal. And I wish it wasn't my last day because I would have loved to develop that. But in the future, that is one thing that I think I'm going to take from my metaphor, um, really take it seriously and try to develop it. So um, that's pretty much it. I. I'm going to go back to working on my ePortfolio, so that's going to be awesome. But um, that is pretty much a wrap on all my vlogs and my blogs for this year. So thank you for watching, reading, on all that good stuff. Thanks.